SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My involvement was that I introduced uh, a pumping scheme for the precursor of the laser, which is the maser. And um, uh, Charles Towns, of course, built uh, the first microwave maser with his two associates, um, Zeiger and uh, Gordon at uh, Columbia in the mid-50s. But they used a molecular beam, a stream of m molecules. And, and I proposed a scheme where you could have continuous operation with using a solid. And uh, the, the, the solid that was used most, although any para many paramagnetic crystals will do, but was the ruby. Ruby is uh, sapphire with some chromium ions in it. And, and chromium ions can also be put in other crystals and it operates uh, similarly. And it introduced uh, systems with more than two energy levels, which are the, the more general systems, and you pump it. And, and then the, it so happens historically that the first operating laser used that same ruby that had become so useful for the microwave masers. The maser stands for microwave amplifier by stimulated emission of radiation. And then uh, the towns wanted to call the this same principle applies in a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum, namely visible light. And the, sa the same ideas apply there. And, and it's remarkable that historically uh, the same ruby crystals that were so functional for the microwave maser also operated for the laser. Laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And of course the, the light emission was much more profound effect on the general society. And that's why we now celebrate uh, the, the 50th anniversary of the laser much more important than the 50th anniversary of the maser. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and, I, and you, you, you were awarded your Nobel um, for nonlinear optics, laser spectroscopy. Th that's what they said, yeah. That's the property of matter at very high light intensities. And, and within one year uh, of, of the maser, of, of the laser in 1960 and 1961, the f first nonlinear optical effect uh, was demonstrated by Peter Franken. He was then at the University of Michigan, but uh, later in the 70s, he was um, the director of the optical sciences here. And uh, unfortunately, he has died relatively young, but he, he showed the first nonlinear optical effect changing the light frequency by a factor two, which is called a second harmonic. Just as a sound, if you go an octave higher, you have the second harmonic of sound. Now he showed the second harmonic of light, and that changed the red ruby light to ultraviolet light. Okay. Can you give an, what, as an everyday example, what would be linear optics? Linear optics is uh, the, the normal optics as we knew in the 19th century. I mean, and any phenomenon that, that uh, refers to a proportionality between the light amplitude and the polarization in the medium. But, uh, and, and usually that is at low light intensities, you only see a linear relationship. But sometimes, the polarization in the medium has uh, quadratic and cubic terms, and, and then you get nonlinear effects. And, and the, the, they were very important also for radio communications and microwave communications. And they only occur if the intensity of the electromagnetic wave gets high enough. And, and, and that, those high light intensities were achieved by the laser developments. So it's a historical fact and understandable that within one year after you got these powerful laser pulses, you could start seeing nonlinear effects. And they, they are very important 
in optical communications because they are all based on what is called frequency mixing, um, uh, harmonic generation and other distortions of the uh, light beams. Very essential in optical communications technology. You're, you're very active not only as a researcher but also in personal life. Are you still playing tennis? Yes, I, I, uh, well, I mean, my tennis isn't that good, but I, I like to, you have to keep both your mind and your body active. Uh, I mean, use it or lose it. And that holds both for mental activity and for physical activity.